This is the brand new Fitbit Charge 6, and it's likely to be my most recommended wearable of the year. Let me explain. So most people that I talk to don't actually want a $350 smartwatch that needs to be charged every single night. Instead, they want something subtle with a long battery life, a good price. They want fitness and health tracking, of course. They want notifications and, and maybe some other smartwatchy things in there. And so if you think about what your options actually are with that checklist, you can't really get a lot of Wear OS smartwatches because the battery just doesn't last. The second option then would be sports watches like Garmin devices, but they're focused to more of an athletic crowd and they're also a lot more expensive. So for the casual user, that brings you to the third option being smart bands, fitness bands, whatever you want to call them. And I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that the Fitbit Charge 6 is going to be the most popular in America within that category. So let's talk a little bit more about what this device is. It only comes in one size. It comes in three different colors though. There's a black one. I don't know why I got the silver one, but I chose to buy that. And then there's like a champagne color as well. And the bands on the back are easy to swap out as well. You kind of just push this little button and it comes off. And other than that, it's a pretty simple device. On the front, you have a color touch screen. On the left side, we have a little raised, it looks like a button, it's not actually a button. This is a pressure sensitive button because it has an ECG on here. And of course, this is able to track a lot of stuff. It's got heart rate on here, blood oxygen, it has a GPS on here. And now that Google owns Fitbit, we're getting a lot of cool features on here, like Google Maps integration, we're getting Google Wallet, so you can actually pay with a lot of different cards on here, not just what's accepted with Fitbit Pay. And we have music controls but only if you use YouTube music. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Now they have a claimed seven day battery life on here. If you're doing a lot of sleep tracking and a lot of working out and, and really pushing this, then you're probably more likely to get four or five days, which is still pretty decent. They charge it maybe once a week then. And although the Fitbit is primarily focused on fitness, as you might expect, it actually has a lot of cool smartwatchy features on here as well. So let's kind of, I mean, probably the best way to do this is just to show you the interface real quickly. So if you just pinch it, that wakes it up. If you double pinch it, that'll open Google Wallet so you can pay with your credit card just from your wrist right here. Even if your phone's not around, like you don't have to be connected to use that. And then swiping through, we've got all of our little tiles right here. So notifications, uh, we've got exercises and there are 40 different workouts you can choose from. And then we have alarms and there's actually a cool feature on here called Smart Wake as well. So it'll track your sleep and wake you up at the optimal time close to when you wanted to wake up. Then after that, we've got timers. We have an EDA scan, which kind of scans your skin and, and figures out how stressed you are, essentially. This is something I personally never use. We have an ECG. That is a nice feature to have on here because this does have FDA approval. Then we have Google Maps. And this is something we did not see on previous Fitbit devices. And it's something that I'm a big fan of. When you're walking around a city, you don't want to have your phone out and look like you don't know what you're doing. Like, it's just you're asking for trouble then. So having it on your wrist is way more subtle. It's also great if you're riding a bike to not have to take your phone out and check directions. Just kind of glance and see what your next turn is. Then we have YouTube music controls. And this is actually a big disappointment for me. So even though I use YouTube music for downloaded music on my phone, because I've got some files I downloaded, uh, for actual, like I use Spotify for most of my music and not having Spotify controls on here or any other music player controls, I think is a big letdown. They're kind of forcing you into Google's uh, software ecosystem there. And I think that's pretty unnecessary. But going back to the watch face, if we swipe from the top down, you have all your quick settings here. You can go into sleep mode, do not disturb mode. Of course, you can access your wallet very quickly there as well. And then swiping up gives us the classic Fitbit, like my day thing. They tell you how many steps you took, how many calories you burned. That's a summary of the interface, but don't be tempted to click off the video just yet. I actually want to talk a lot more about the accuracy of this because that's something that a lot of small devices like this have really struggled with in the past. So taking a look at the GPS accuracy, I went for a 12 mile bike ride. And if we zoom in on this map, you can see it was pretty much right on the money. Anywhere that looks like it deviated off is actually where I stopped and got off the trail and, and took some photos. You can see exactly where the trail went, exactly where I rode. There's very, very little wandering. The only thing I could maybe find is this one sharp turn. It cut a little bit short. Um, it shouldn't have done that. But otherwise, I mean, I rode for a while. I also had my Garmin Venue 3, which mind you is three times the price of this. And at the end of the 12 mile ride, it was off by just 1%. So it's not perfect, but I'm really happy with how good this little device was with regards to GPS. Now, as far as the heart rate accuracy goes, you can see right here, I was comparing this to a known accurate Polar H10 heart rate strap. 
and this was a pretty steady state ride. It wasn't I, was, I wasn't doing intervals or anything especially difficult, uh, so you can see just how well this actually performed there. Now, if I did some sprint intervals, this does claim to be 60% better at sprint intervals or high intensity interval training uh, compared to the previous Fitbits. And overall, it's not perfect, but I don't think anybody's buying this to train for an Ironman. And so I think for all purposes that this is going to be used for, this is more than accurate enough. And speaking of heart rate, of course, this has ECG. I don't have a way of testing and verifying that, but assuming since it's FDA approved, I, I could assume it's reasonably accurate. Um, this also does have some high and low heart rate notifications as well as irregular heart rate notifications. We also have a whole suite of things that can be used for sleep tracking and Fitbit likes to give you a sleep animal, just kind of like dumb down and not dumb down, but summarize uh, and give you like a big picture of your sleep habits and maybe how you can improve from that. Kind of taking like skin temperature, blood oxygen, heart rate, resting heart rate, VO2 max, like all these different things, combining them together into something that's a lot more digestible rather than just raw data. But if you really wanted to know like your respiration rate or your blood oxygen level, you can find that with this as well. This also has hidden features not seen in the interface, one of them being the auto workout detection. So if you just start walking or running, it knows you're walking or running. And after doing that for either one or 10 minutes, it'll say, hey, I noticed you've been walking for the past 10 minutes. Here's the workout. And it doesn't start then. It knows that it started in the beginning and it has the whole workout tracked. This is also rated for 50 meters of water resistance. So you can swim with this. You could swim with this in salt water. Just kind of make sure you're washing it off. There's not like any buttons or moving parts on here. So I'm not too worried. Now, this device obviously has a smaller display, but if that entire black space was a display, I think it'd be fantastic. However, one of my complaints with this device is that there is a lot of wasted space around there, a pretty chunky bezel where you can see on the top and bottom, there's a lot of black space. It doesn't even look quite symmetric to me. And on the left and right, we've got some black space there as well. So Fitbit does know this is a smaller display. And so for anyone who doesn't have the best vision, you can actually triple tap and that will zoom in on different parts of the watch. The second complaint is that it doesn't have a microphone or a speaker. This seems like it'd be so useful for Google to just add Google Assistant on here just for added functionality without needing to have other apps on here. Um, it does have haptics, of course, that's going to be your alarm and your notifications. It's not the strongest haptics. Honestly, they are a little bit weak. Now, the next one is my biggest complaint with this device, and that is the price. So this is a smaller, more affordable device compared to a lot of smartwatches, but it's still $160, which I could say you could probably justify that. I think that that makes sense for what you're getting here except they then have a paywall on top of that. So using this device, if you don't pay anything else, you can get some insights, like you can get some basic stuff, but if you wanna get the deeper insights about your sleep and about your health and other things like that, you have to get Fitbit Premium. So they have that paywall there. Like you're gonna to have to pay for Fitbit Premium for as long as you have this device. And that's something like Whoop does that. You have to pay for that, but you don't have to pay for the device then. So. It's just kind of like a, a weird trade-off, but getting past those drawbacks, I really do like this device. I like how Google added their own features on here, like Google Maps and Google Wallet, and I think that we're getting some decent functionality out of a smaller device like this. Having GPS and, and heart rate tracking on here is very useful, and I mean, even though it is kind of expensive, and even though there are a couple things I'm not extremely happy about, this is great. I would buy this for my parents. I would give this to somebody else. It's a good gift and, and a pretty solid device across the board. But what do you think about this? And specifically, what do you think about that Fitbit paywall?